We have an optimization problem here in number 10 where we are asked to find the points that are closest to 0, 1 that are on this parabola. So like most optimization problems, we start by sketching a graph, right, drawing a picture. This happens to be a, a parabola that opens downward and it's topping out at 0, 5. And so it looks something like this. And then the point zero, 01 is right here. This is my, oh, I guess I tried to draw it and it didn't show up. There it is. So there's zero, 01. We're trying to figure out which points on this parabola, see these all these little dots that are on the parabola, which one is closest to my big red dot there. And so what we need is we need an expression for the distance from my red dot to these points. You just pick a arbitrary point on the parabola since we don't know the x-coordinate of the answer and we don't know the y-coordinate of the answer, those become our variables. And what we want to do is write a function for this distance. And so we know the distance formula. We can write that out. The distance from this point 0, 1 to p can be written like this. It's the square root of x minus 0 squared, which is x squared, plus y minus 1 squared. That's how you do the distance formula. Now, we're ready to take the derivative, except that we have too many variables. And that happens a lot in optimization problems. So what we need is a constraint. And sure enough, they give us the constraint right here in the statement of the problem. We're going to replace y with 5 minus x squared. So we're going to put 5 minus x squared in here. And we'll clean it up because 5 minus x squared minus 1 is really just 4 minus x squared. So when I rewrite this, that's what will be in the parentheses. So I have this function d equals the square root of x squared plus 4 minus x squared. And I'm going to need to take the derivative of this so I can find the critical points. And I'll do that on the next slide. To find the critical points, I'm going to need to take the derivative of this function, d prime. And so we've done a lot of functions where you have to find the derivative of the square root of some expression underneath. We know that on the bottom of this, on the denominator of this derivative, we're going to have 2 square root of that same function, x squared plus 4 minus x squared, squared. I missed a squared there. And on top, it's going to be the derivative of the thing that was plugged in, so the derivative of this. And that's going to be 2x minus 4x times 4 minus x squared. And I had to use the chain rule to do that, right? Bring the 2 down, and that's 4 minus x squared to the first power times negative 2x, and I just cleaned it up. So we have this derivative, and I guess I should probably just simplify the numerator a little bit. When I distribute the negative 4x to the 4, I get negative 16, so that makes a negative 14x. And then when I distribute the negative 4x to the x squared, that's plus 4x cubed. And then my denominator is still 2 square root of... Um, x squared plus 4 minus x squared squared. If you want, you can probably factor out a 2 and cancel that 2 out. We don't really need to. What we need to do is we need to find the critical points, meaning we need to set this thing equal to 0. Well, we've talked about this a lot. When you have a rational function and you want to find the zeros, you look at the numerator. So I'm just going to set this numerator equal to 0. So I'm going to have 4x cubed minus 14x equals 0, which factors to 4x squared minus 14 times x. So one of my critical points, call those the CPs, is 0. But we're going to throw that out because... Actually, no, I don't want to throw that out. That could be... Uh, let me erase this. We don't want to throw out 0. That just means our closest point might be on the y-axis. It might be 0, 5. Um, 
And then the other critical points are going to be when 4x squared minus 14 equals 0. And so that's going to be, let's do this, minus 14 divided by 4, take the square root. X is going to be uh, the square root plus minus square root of 14 over the square root of 4, which is 2. So I really have three critical points. I have 0, I have negative 14 over, square root of 14 over 2, and I have positive square root of 14 over 2. And I just need to see what's happening with those. And one way to check this out is to make a sign diagram on this derivative, right? So I'm actually going to try and squeeze it in right here. Or at least I'm going to write down what the signs are. No, let me go do it on the new screen. I don't want to confuse anybody. So I'm going to test these critical points on a sign diagram and see if we have any minimum values because we're looking for the closest. So I went ahead and set up the sign diagram. I have the three critical points, which are negative, 14, uh, negative square root of 14 over 2, uh, 0, and square root of 14 over 2. This is a 14. And then I had to pick representative values from each of these little subintervals. So negative square root of 14 over 2 is a little bit less than 2, so I picked negative 2 to the left of there. Negative 1 is between negative square root of 14 over 2 and 0 and so on. Like 1 is between 0 and square root of 14 over 2. And when you test these values in the first derivative, which I wrote underneath here, uh, I think you'll agree that when I plug in a negative 2, I'm going to get 28, excuse me, 28 minus 32, which is negative 4. In the denominator, I still end up with something positive, so I have a negative divided by a positive. So this thing's negative over here. That means this is decreasing. When I plug in negative 1, I get 14 minus 4, which is positive 10. And so that's a positive over positive, so that's increasing, right? This is, this is a plus part of the sine diagram. I repeat that process. If I plug a 1 in, I get negative 14 plus 4, which is a negative 10, so that's decreasing. And I plug a 2 in, I get negative 28 plus 32, which is positive 4, so that's increasing. What that tells me is that of my critical points, both negative 14 over the square root of 2 and 14 over the square root of 2 are my x-coordinates of my minimum. So it is, I have to have two places where the minimum occurs. Okay. Now, to find out, uh, they, those are both relative minimums right now, but to find out if there's one or if they're both the same, which I know they're the same because this is a parabola, what I'll do is plug them into the original value the original function. Uh, this is just square root of 14 over 2. That's positive. And when you plug these values back into the original function, for both of them you get square root of th or you get 3 over 2, sorry, just 1.5. You go back and plug those into the original function, which is y equals 5 minus x squared. You're going to get uh, 5 minus 14 over 4 which is 7 over 2, and you get 3 over 2. Same thing with 14, uh, square root of 14 over 2, because when you square them, they're both positive. So this was the original function. Both of these y values are the closest you can get. One, they, one happens on each side of the, of the uh, y-axis of that parabola. But these are the points that are closest to that point zero one. Not an easy problem, but I think once you see it done, uh, especially setting up the picture, the the optimization makes sense. Good luck and take care.